Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm David. I'd like to start by saying thank you to everyone uh, for all your kind comments and support from my previous video. Um, if you've not seen it, I just sort of explained where I've been for the past month. Um, you can go back and listen to it now, uh, it's just a voiceover. Um, and yeah, I'll sort of explain what's been going on. Um, I do apologise if this video is not as upbeat as normal. I'm getting there very slowly. Um, I appreciate all of you guys which said I could wait as long as I want before I upload. Uh, but I think if I don't upload a video now, I'll get either get too carried away and all you'll get is a video in several months um, basically showing a finished layout, which I don't want to do really. I do like to keep everyone in the loop. Part of being part of this uh, community. Um, and also, I think I might get a bit overwhelmed if I leave it all too late um, and end up having to make loads of videos at the end showing you everything I did. So I'm going to try and spread out the... Uh, spread out the videos a bit and at least uh, keep you sort of up, up, up to date. So yeah, I do, do apologise if my presenting is not quite up to scratch this time. Um, and thank you guys for all your support. I just wanted to get this up here to show you West Canal Sidings and where it's currently at. Okay, so for all those who haven't seen West Canal Sidings, there was two videos on it um, on the layout before, two or three actually. Um, a few months ago when I was back at university from September uh, uh, until Christmas. It's a six foot by one foot shunting layout um, and it has a lot of scratch building on it as you can see. If you've not seen this area before, very largely unchanged. Lots of dust clay cobbles, um, stone wall here down to a resin canal, uh, dust clay retaining wall and an engine shed here, a little lean to scratch built engine shed which has lights in it as well. This top area here has changed a bit but I won't be going into that in this video. There is a removable section uh, that should be sat on here. That's currently away from the layout as I've been doing a lot of work on it and you'll see that in future videos hopefully. If we pan around then you can see the other half of the layout and this half of the layout um, has changed a lot since you last saw it um, on the channel, however it's not really changed uh, since I started working on the layout again. So 90% of this is exactly how it was when it came back home with me at Christmas um, last year. So if we work away from the back to the front, so we've got the station area, we've seen all this before um, I believe just in foam. So we have the platform that I built originally and the overbridge. All I did is I clad this with plastic card. Um, so we've got brick plastic card and stone paving plastic card and that's been painted and weathered. Um, front and centre then, the station building is a, is a Hornby Scaledale building. That's got a light in it and we've got a ratio fence along the back with some Metcalf benches and these random milk uh, churns down here at the bottom. This is something that's going to be changing soon. I'm not happy really with the brick painting that I did originally. You'll also notice I had to rip off the white line along the front of the platform here. That was done with matchsticks, but it stuck out just a bit too far to let my class 1, 2, 2 pass easily. Trees along here then, those are just wooden scenics, fine leaf foliage. And there's also a bit of random clump foliage uh, plumped, in, plumped in there. Hedgerow, um, grass and hedgerow, this is just Sculptor mould with some static grass. Then we've got rubberized horse hair, brown paint and foliage to make the hedgerow. And as I said, all of that is old work. The new stuff then, down here, I decided... I had no clue really what I wanted to do with this front half of the layout. I've had a few various ideas over the lifetime of the design of this layout and the actual building, but I wasn't happy with anything really. Finally come to a decision which I'm quite happy with now, and that is a coal merchant up at this end. Um, a country lane down this middle bit, and then a bit of a goods yard here. So we'll work from this end along. What I've done so far, I've put in some sculptor mould to level up the ground to be level with the track. A lot more work to be done there on ground cover, um, that'll be in a future video. And then I've just been 
yesterday actually started making and painting um, I believe it's a wills or a ratio coal office so yeah that'll be in much more detail in a future video so I won't show you too much now this is going to be sort of fenced in or with a hedgerow or something allowing room for a country lane which is going to just curve along the front of the layout here I really like a more rural look, a more countryside look um, so I know this is an industrial shunting layout but that doesn't mean it can't be in the countryside so we're going to have a little lane along the front here gives me another chance to have a crack uh, at modelling a country lane which I quite enjoy doing and then in between all the bushes and shrubs there's going to be a passing passing uh, place or a lay-by or some sort and that's going to have this Land Rover in. This is something I've worked on recently so I've weathered up this nice uh, Mark II Land Rover um, and I'm really happy with it. For some personal reasons I kind of want to feature it at the front of the layout so that's going to sit there um, proudly in the passing place maybe with a few people discussing something or maybe that's the car of some of the workers in, in one of the goods areas. If we just pan then along from the Land Rover, we've got this blank space here uh, between the front of the layout and the, uh, the end here of the runaround loop. So what I thought would be nice is a bit of GWR fencing, just fencing this area in. We're then going to have a grounded van body I've already bought a kit for that, which I need to make. And this is just going to be chock full of random crates and barrels and things under tarps and ladders and tools and just general storage of random goods and, and, um, and consumables that are needed to keep the railway running. So I thought that should be a nice little storage area at the front there. Okay then, so that was just a quick tour of the scenery, what you've seen so far, and obviously all the new stuff that's changed. Apologise for keeping it brief, uh, but I just really wanted to get this video up and show you guys what I'm doing to allow myself to progress a bit more. Okay, some other changes then. You might have noticed this is much more um, well lit than it was before. This is what the layout used to look like. And then with the lights on it's much much better so what I've done is I've taken the lighting helmet from um, Cherry Brook my, my newer portable layout as I'm not going to be using Cherry Brook it's sort of mothballed for the next several months uh, if not forever <laughs> honestly it depends it depends what I decide to do with the layout um, but for now it's, it's not going to be used it's going to be left at home when I return to uni but I might as well make use of the lighting system I've built because I'm quite happy with it just so happens both layouts are six foot long so this fits perfectly I've used the same brackets that held it before so if we look at one end I'm currently in my uh, sister's old bedroom she's moved out of the house so apologies for the uh, garish wallpaper um, yeah if we look at one end same 3D printed bracket um, literally removed from chamber screwed on here this holds a one by two or something similar which in turn holds the plywood and 3D printed lighting helmet. If you've not seen how that was made you can go back to previous videos. I've spray painted that all black just to tidy it up a bit and it looks really nice on the layout. Something else which I've added then um, you, you can see Cherrybrook in the background it's just been turned into a storage place and again apologies for my sister's bright purple wallpaper I've added a removable fiddle stick here. All this allows me to do is run a train through the station and out this side of the layout. So it's just made of scrap wood and plywood I had with 3D printed dovetail uh, bracket here. It's got a handle on one end, so it's just a bit flexy. So yeah, this just slides on the end here on the 3D printed bracket. and means when I've got the room available I can run a train out onto here not sure how that will work when I'm at university if it will fit in my bedroom but uh, at least I have the option 
Continuing the whistle stop tour then, of things that changed since you've last seen this layout. If you remember previously, all of the points were controlled by Arduino and servos, and that was controlled via phone app. All of the point workers remained exactly the same. It's still the same um, Arduino system controlling the points. But instead of a phone app, what I've done is I've built a control box. Um, if anyone wants to know the exact details of this, I might be able to make a video on it in a few weeks or a few months um, when I get properly back into making videos. For now, uh, as I'm just sort of glossing over everything, it's a 3D printed box with uh, blue LEDs that indicate the position of the points. There's another Arduino in here and it just goes to a USB port. Now what I've done is I've got 12 volts and the serial in and out of the sort of main Arduino come through this wire and into this box where there's a second Arduino. And I've written code so this point, uh, this switch here just sends a signal into the main Arduino which moves the point. I thought it was a lot nicer than the phone app as it's physical, it's more tactile. <laughs> Apologies if you can hear the, the uh, real life trains running in the background. Um, yeah, so this is physical and more tactile. It's also slightly more plug and play. I had a few issues with Bluetooth connectivity when it was run by a phone app. The option is still there. Um, I can reconnect the Bluetooth module if I want to. I did cut it off when I did a bit of rewiring, but there's nothing stopping me soldering that back on. And I've still got the phone app written, and that would interact in exactly the same way. Um, I didn't actually have to change the main code very much at all. So yeah, I could still go back to the phone app, but for now, we've got this nice tactile control panel with LEDs. Something else I've added then is this um, ExpressNet port to allow me to swap my controllers about. At the moment, I've been using the LH90 quite a lot. It's really nice for shunting back and forth. Okay, so that's about it for the whistle stop tour of things that have happened on the layout. And one last thing I want to show you, I've done a lot of work to get this layout running much better than it did before. Obviously the control panel is much more intuitive now. I cleaned all the track, um, I did a bit of fiddling around with some of the points which were a little dodgy. Final thing I've done though, is all around the layout I have installed hidden magnets. So uh, the exact same magnets I've used on other layouts, we now have hidden magnets everywhere allowing for shunting operations. And as the control and shunting of this layout is now much easier, I've uh, sort of reactivated a feature that was in the initial plans which I haven't actually used before. And that's the Ingle Nook puzzle. So you might have seen this on a few layouts recently, it's become more popular again popularised by larger YouTubers than me, certainly. Um, I've always been a sort of fan of them, and I built one into this layout um, just over a year ago when I first designed it. So we've got the backtrack here that goes into the lean-to shed, holds three wagons. This middle track here also holds three wagons. And this siding here holds five, um, if you ignore the point here you've effectively got an ingle nook fan. And then going up this way, uh, it can be as long as you really want, um, but you're only allowed to take three wagons and a loco in there at a time. So to solve the puzzle then, what I've done is I've printed out some labels. Um, so we've got numbers one to five. Those are laminated and they've been matte varnished as well, um, just to help me see them under the bright lights. And they're currently um, what I do is I shuffle them and, and pick a random order, as random as possible. So we've currently got 3, 5, 2, 4, 1. And then following all of the rules of the Inglenook puzzle, uh, which you can find on various websites, you've got to shunt them into the right order. And, and that's been a great stress, re <laughs> stress reliever for me recently, is shunting this up and down um, to get them in the right order. So if I've got enough space on my camera, I think I'll just film a simple run of the Inglenook puzzle to end out this video. So yeah, thank you for watching guys, thank you for all your support and thank you for subscribing. I'm slowly starting to get back into Model Railways properly, 
Um, I will only be working on this layout and not my other two, um, at least for the next couple of months. But yeah, just, just, just thank you for all your support, guys. I was really amazed by it. So yeah, right.